The robber bridegroom. Sounds ominous already. There once was a miller who had one beautiful daughter, and as she was grown up, he was anxious that she should be well married and provided for. He said to himself, I will give her to the first suitable man who comes and asks for her hand. Not long after a suitor appeared, and he appeared to be very rich, and the miller could see nothing in him with which to find fault, and so he betrothed his daughter to him. Problematic already. <laughs> the red flags just increase as we read more and more of the story. But the girl did not care for the man, as a girl ought to care for her beloved husband. She did not feel that she could trust him, and she could not look at him nor think of him without an inward shudder. <laughs> Sounds like a great start to a marriage. <laughs> One day he said to her, You have not yet paid me a visit, although we have been betrothed for some time. I do not know where your house is, she answered. My house is out there in the dark forest, he said. Another <laughs> red flag. <laughs> why, would you go, why would you build a house in the middle of a dark forest? Why would you invite someone there? Why would you go? She tried to <laughs> excuse herself by saying that she would not be able to find the way thither. Her betrothed only replied, You must come and see me next Sunday. I have already invited guests for that day, and you may not mistake the way I will strew ashes along the path. Another red flag. <laughs> Let's hope it's uh, fire ashes and not human ashes. <laughs> When Sunday came, and it was time for the girl to start, a feeling of dread came over her, which she could not explain, and that she might be able to find her path again. She filled her pockets with peas and lentils to sprinkle on the ground. She's trying to do a Hansel and Gretel, and <laughs> she shouldn't do it with food. Because people eat food, well people, animals eat the food. <laughs> On reaching the entrance to the forest, she found the path strewed with ashes, and these she followed, throwing down some peas on either side of her at every step she took. Why would you need to do that? <laughs> Once you've reached like, the path with ashes on it, and, like they're visible to you, why would you then also put peas on that? Because it's already a thing that shows you how to go the way, unless she's imagining that it's going to like wash away, but then it would also wash away the peas. What <laughs> strategy is this? Is it magic ash? Uh, <laughs> she walked the whole day until she came to the deepest, darkest part of the forest. Another red flag. He lives in a dark forest. Why do you have to live in the deepest, darkest part of it? There she saw a lonely house looking so grim and mysterious that it did not please her at all. She stepped inside, but not a soul was to be seen, and a great silence reigned throughout. Why would you go in somewhere that is scary to you? That's why you leave and go back home and say, oh, I got lost. So the voice cried out, Turn back, turn back, young maiden fair, linger not in this murderer's lair. There's another red flag. <laughs> Disembodied voice tells you a good link. The girl looked up and saw that the voice came from a bird hanging in the cage on the wall. Again it cried, Turn back, turn back, young maiden fair, linger not in this murderer's lair. The girl passed on, going from room to room of the house, but they were all empty and she still saw no one. Why are you still in the house? 
The bird told you to leave. <laughs> At last she came to a cellar, and there sat a very, very old woman, who could not keep her head from shaking. Can you tell me, asked the girl, if my betrothed husband lives here? Ah, you poor child, answered the old woman. What a place for you to come to. This is a murderer's den. Red flag, <laughs> once more. You think yourself a promised bride, and that your marriage will soon take place? But this, but it is with death that you will keep your marriage feast. Look, do you see that large cauldron of water which I am obliged to keep on fire? As soon as they have you in their power, they will kill you without mercy and cook you and eat you, for they are eaters of men. If I did not take pity on you and save you, you would be lost. Thereupon the old woman led her behind a large cask which was quite hid her from view. Keep as still as the mouse, she said. Do not move or speak, or it will be all over with you. Tonight, when the robbers are all asleep, we will flee together. I have long been waiting for an opportunity to escape. <sighs> and if we just hadn't gone into the forest, I wouldn't be dealing with this. The words hardly out of her mouth when the godless crew returned, dragging another young girl along with them. They were all drunk and paid no heed to her cries and lamentations. They gave her wine to drink, three glasses full, one of white wine, one of red wine, and one of yellow. What is yellow wine? <laughs> is that just a mistranslation for beer? Question mark? Does yellow wine exist? Is that a thing? Is it a thing? Let's have a look. Yellow wine. There's a Chinese beverage that's called yellow wine. <laughs> But I don't think they were talking about that in Victorian Germany. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. Yellow wine. And with that, her heart gave way and she died. Oh, God. <laughs> she died from three glasses of wine, ch children. This is why you don't mix alcohol. <laughs> or maybe it's just that the yellow wine is just like... So... <laughs> non-existent. They killed them. <laughs> then, oh, oof, oof. And then they took her clothes off and cut her into pieces and then put salt on it. Ew. Old timey book warning. Old timey book warning. Um, could have done that before, but you know. <laughs> Adam's <laughs> comment. <laughs> the poor Bertross girl, finally acting normally, was scared. <laughs> crouched trembling and shuddering behind the cask and she saw what a terrible fate had been intended for her by the robbers. One of them now noticed a gold ring still remaining on the little finger of the murdered girl and as he could not draw it off easily he took a hatchet and cut off the finger but the finger sprang into the air and fell behind the cask into the lap of the girl who was hiding there. There's a big uh, jump scare moment for the game of this story. <laughs> uh, 
The robber took a light and began looking for it, but he could not find it. <gasps> spin the wheel time, spin the wheel time, where is the wheel? Why am I so far down? I don't have uh, clothing redeems on the screen, so I'm here. Let me find the, the pop out the wheel from Streamlabs. Ah, oh, you think I would have a sh this is a shortcut? But I don't. Ah, uh, <laughs> you think it would be near the top, but it isn't. Maybe I'll spin the wheel. Uh, here we go. Spin the wheel. Flower. Right. Let me. Why did it tell me flower and on here it's autumn leaf? Questions. Did I spin it twice by accident? Do I just spin it again? I feel like I should just spin it again because I feel like it's lying to me right now. <laughs> Here we go. Spin the wheel. Accurately this time. Right, what's it say? What's it say? What's it say? Sad cloud purple. Now I have to find sad cloud purple. Uh, go back to the screen while I find sad cloud purple. Do 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 clothing. Why is it not <laughs> pink? Oh, here we are. Now, <coughs> none of these clothes are optimized for how my body currently is. So it will be a little bit weird. Um, but please appreciate that this will be changed later on. <laughs> Silent than that, so there we go. That's somewhat normal looking. And here we are, we're back to it. We're back. We're back. There is another colourway of the sad. Adam will remember this. Uh, I think I showed you it literally years ago at this point, this drive. <laughs> now, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, they were looking for the finger. Uh, the rower took it, I took a light, <laughs> took it light, took a light and began looking for it, but he could not find it. Have you looked behind the large cask? asked one of the others, but the old woman called out, come and eat your suppers and let the thing be till tomorrow, the finger won't run away. The woman, the old woman is right, said the robbers, and they ceased looking for the finger and they sat down. The old woman then mixed the sleeping draught with their wine and before long they were all lying on the floor of the cellar fast asleep and snoring. As soon as the girl was assured of this she came from behind the cask. 
She was obliged. Oh my god, she was yawning so much. She was obliged to step over the bodies of the sleepers who were lying close together, and every moment she was filled with renewed dread lest she should awaken them. But God helped her so that she passed away. Passed away. <laughs> He's been making her dead already. A lot of people have died in stories so far today, but not this woman's not yet. At the very least. <laughs> Ah, oh. but God helped her so that she passed safely over them and then she and the old woman went upstairs, opened the door and hastened as fast as they could from the murderer's den. They found the ashes scattered by the wind but the peas and lentils that sprouted and grown sufficiently above the ground to guide them in the moonlight along the path. All night long they walked and it was morning before they reached the mill and then the girl told her father all that had happened. Here's me being proved wrong about the ashes and peas. The day came that they had been that they had, the, 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 the day came that had been fixed for the marriage. The bridegroom arrived and also a large company of guests, for the miller had taken care to invite all of his friends and relations. And as they sat at the feast, each guest in turn was asked to tell a tale. The bride sat still and did not say a word. And you, my love, said the bridegroom, turning to her, is there no tell you know? Tell us something. I will tell you a dream then, said the bride. I went alone through the forest and came at last to a house. Not a soul could I find within, but a bird that was hanging in a cage on the wall cried, Turn back, turn back, young maiden fair, linger not in this murderer's lair. And again a second time it said these words, My darling, this is only a dream. I went on through the house from room to room, but they were all empty and everything was so grim and mysterious. At last I went down to the cellar and there sat a very, very old woman who could not keep her head still. I asked her if my betrothed lived there and she answered, Ah, you poor child, you are come to a murderer's den. Your betrothed does indeed live here, but he will kill you all without mercy and afterwards cook you and eat you. My darling, this is only a dream. The old woman hid me behind a large cask. Scarcely had she done this when the robbers returned home, dragging a young girl with them. They gave her three types of wine. White, red and yellow, and with that she died. My darling, this is only a dream. Then they tore off her dainty clothing and cut her beautiful body into pieces and sprinkled salt on it. My darling, this is only a dream. And one of the robbers saw that there was a gold ring still left on her finger, and as it was difficult to draw off, he took off a hatchet and cut off her finger, but the finger sprang into the air and fell behind a great cask into my lap, and here is the finger with the ring. And with these words the bride drew forth the finger and showed it to the assembled guests. The bridegroom, who during this recital had grown deadly pale, up and tried to escape, but the guests seized him and held him fast. They delivered him up to justice, and he and all of his murderous band were condemned to death for their wicked deeds. The end. <laughs> the finger. Imagine that, though, just, like, pulling out a dead person's finger to prove someone wrong. In front of the wedding. In front of everyone you know. <laughs>